Hello, and welcome to the Good Free Photos channel, goodfreephotos.com, where you can get over 20,000 photos for your assignment or projects. Some of the photos that I'll be using in this review will be available on my site, and I will link to them once I get that blog post up, so check the description, guys. So, um, the, today we're going to review the image review for the Nikon P1000. Now, outside of being a 3000 millimeter lens, we're going to check the image quality. I'm going to show you why you need this camera. I mean, I made a joke video about this, but today I'm actually going to give you a review, my honest review of this, and also we're going to look at the images and look at the image quality of this awesome camera here. Um, you can tell I'm a little biased towards this camera because I really like this camera, but because it lets me get shots that no other camera can. Yes, I can get shots like this with my Optica 1300 millimeter uh, with a telephoto, but the problem with the Optica 1300 with telephoto is it's really freaking big, and the image quality honestly isn't as good as this one because the Optica is a really cheap lens. This lens is, I mean, it's not the best image quality. It's not like the f of 4 600 millimeter from like Nikon, but that's like $12,000. And this is only $1,000. And uh, one thing that I will have to say for this uh, camera is that at 3,000 millimeters, the autofocus is fairly slow and you have to sometimes adjust um, AF settings um, to, to what to actually focus on when you're shooting like buildings, birds or something. For shooting buildings and stuff, the AF is actually pretty good, but when you're actually shooting birds, it's a little different. I actually shoot in JPEG with this camera. Um, I know a lot of people like to only shoot in RAW, and I only shoot in RAW on my D750 and other cameras I've had, but on this one inch sensor, um, the JPEG options are actually pretty good, and I actually like shooting in JPEG more than RAW with this camera. I do shoot in manual still for the most part. I don't really like the bird watching mode, and we're gonna see what this camera can do, and we're gonna compare it with other focal links that I uh, use on my other cameras, and we're gonna see the difference between this camera and other cameras and what the, the abilities of this camera really are. So let's go to the images, folks. So let's look at the images. We're going to do comparisons of zoom ins and zoom outs. So this picture is at 24 millimeters, and this is the same scene at 3,000 millimeters. Look at that difference right there. We'll compare them side by side now so you can actually see the difference. So this is 24 millimeters, and this is all the way optically zoomed in at 3,000. This is not invoke the digital zoom. If you invoke the digital zoom, you can actually get four times as close, but I am not a heathen, and I don't use digital zoom. So I believe digital zoom is only for videography, and in photography, you should never use digital zoom. Only optical zoom. If you actually zoom this in on 58, you can actually see the Capitol building, which is this building back there. But if you zoom... the if you zoom this in at 58, you can see like how much bigger it is on 58. You can kind of see the building in the distance. And if you zoom this in 58, you can, pr you can easily see people on the balcony. And they'd be pretty big on the balcony. Obviously, the image quality is not going to be that good if you zoom in 58. The image quality is never that good if you zoom in 58 on any photo in photo view. So let's just take this back out. This is what the original photo actually looks like. Because zooming in is just basically cropping a lot. Um, so let's look at let's just take a look at what this photo actually looks like. That Capitol building, you can't even really see it right now. It's just that speck under that cloud. And at 3,000 magnification, maximum uh, optical zoom, this is what you get. So that's just the power of the optical zoom of the Nikon P1000. And here we have another example of 24 versus 3,000. If you look at the 24 millimeter um, image, you can. You can see that you can't even see the water tower across the lake. And at 3,000, you can easily see that the pretty good detail on the water tower. And if, the, if there's a person climbing up the ladder, you can see that person too. And this is from like a mile away across the lake, um, Lake Mendota. If you zoom in, you can see the water towers right there. But if you just take the original picture, it's right there. It's that dot over there. Even if you expand it up to maximum, you can barely see it right there. It's right there. Um, but if you expand, if you actually expand this one to full size, you can definitely see it. Like if there was a person climbing at that ladder, you'd be able to see him very clearly. That is the, just the power of 24 millimeters versus 3,000 millimeter zoom. As for wildlife, um, how much zoom can you get? Well, let's look at 24 versus 3,000 millimeters again. So 20, this is the this is the picture at 24 millimeters, and this is the picture at 3,000 millimeters. There's actually a gr ground squirrel in there. You're probably like, dude, you're trolling, dude. That dude, nah, dude, you totally trolling. There's no ground squirrel in that picture, but there is. 
There is. We can just expand it, and you can see the ground squirrel is actually right there. But if you don't magnify, you can't even really see the ground squirrel. But at full, uh, but at 3,000 millimeters optical zoom, this is what you get: ground squirrel. And there's pretty good. Um, uh, there, there, it's pretty good detail. You can see it's not completely focused in on the. I didn't focus directly on the eye. I kind of tried to just focus the entire ground squirrel. Maybe not a great idea. Probably just should have focused on the eye more. Um, and uh, I actually did manually focus this one, so I might have screwed up a little bit on the manual focus. And also, I, the shutter speed was not quite high enough. I wanted to take at 100 ISO, so the shutter speed was a little slow, unfortunately. I should have made the shutter speed a little faster because you can see the ear was flickering, but that's really my fault, not the, the, not the image's fault. But you can see, like, you can see pretty good uh, detail on the ground squirrel. Um, so that's the power of zoom, 24 millimeters versus 3,000 millimeters on the uh, ground squirrel. Now the next one is probably going to be the one of my best pictures. Uh, it's going to be of a goose at 24 and a goose at 3,000 millimeters. So let's just look at the power of the uh, of the zoom again. So this is 24 millimeters, and you can see the goose is right there. The goose is actually right there. You can, there. So yes, there is a goose. I'm not making this up. There is actually a goose. And the funny thing about this picture is I actually used um, face detect for this picture on my as the auto uh, focus option. I noticed that if I'm really close up to a bird face, like a big of a big bird, like a goose, uh, face detect is actually the best auto focus, and I didn't have to manually focus. So this one is probably a little bit more focused than some of my other pictures as I'm still getting used to manually focusing at 3,000 millimeters. If you look at, if you um, zoom in, you can see if you actually autofocus correctly, the detail is actually pretty good. There is some noise reduction, so you can tell there's a bit of loss of detail in the feathers over there, especially at, at the top feathers. Yes, the noise reduction does result in a little bit of loss of detail right there, but it's still a very, very good picture. And if you even if you blow it up full screen, you can tell that there's a decent amount of uh, detail right there. You can see like the leaves on the beak and stuff. Obviously, um, this is at 100 ISO, and if you go to two, three, 400 ISO, you obviously lose more detail. So you can see that there's some loss of detail a little bit on the top feathers over here, but overall, very, very good quality, and that's the difference between 24 millimeters and 3,000 millimeters on the image. Now, let's actually... Do something else now. We're going to look at the difference between 600 millimeters and 3,000 millimeters because 600 millimeters is kind of like the length of one of the of your basic telephoto wildlife lens. I actually have a Nikon 2 to 500, which gives slightly better image quality than the Sigma 150 to 600. Um, but 600 is usually the maximum you can zoom without a telepho without a teleconverter um, on a zoom lens. So let's actually look at the difference between 3,000 and 600. And we can look at the difference between these two images. And I think these are kind of like um, woo, uh, coots in the lake. Correct me if I get these am animal species wrong, because I'm not, a, I'm not a wildlife biologist or a botanist, obviously. And I don't really, I can't identify these um, animals all that right. So this animal was most of the way across, this uh, duck, coot, loon, whatever you call it, was half, most of the way across a pond. And this is the loon at 600 millimeters and this is the loon at 3000 millimeters now obviously if you use a full frame cam if you use like a full frame nikon d750 and a 600 millimeter camera you'll get less noise less distractions but no matter how much noise you can reduce you can't get this kind of detail out of that picture all right now some of you are saying well i can just use a 61 megapixel sony um r, r ar7 mark 4 and a uh, 600 millimeter so oh, and a 400 millimeter um, f of 2.8 lens and put two teleconverters on it and basically get the same kind of uh, res get get the same resolution and superior image quality as you and my I'm not going to argue with on with you on that if you do have a Sony A7R4 with an f of two point uh, with an f of two point eight, and you put two teleconverters on it, you could get the same resolution of image because you have a lot. More, even though you don't have the same zoom, even with two teleconverters, you can probably get like one point six zoom or something like that. Or, or actually, no, with two teleconverters, you can probably get like close to three x zoom, and you would have a twelve hundred millimeter lens. And this is a three thousand millimeter lens, but you also have a lot more megapixels, so you could get slightly more megapixels and higher image quality than I could get with my P one thousand. But you're missing a detail here. 
I don't have $17,000 to blow on camera equipment right now. I do, however, have $1,000. And for $1,000, that's pretty good. So this is at 600 millimeters. This is at 3,000 millimeters. If we just go full screen, you can see, you can just see a small duck in the pond right there. Whereas with this, it's not in your face, but you can see a fairly good sized duck right there. Um, once again, if you zoom in at 3,000 millimeters, I did, I did uh, autofocus this one. Uh, it is, I think it is actually, I don't know if it's actually focused right, um, but if you look at it, you can tell that there's definitely some, you can definitely tell like there's some loss of detail right here. Um, it is 100 ISO and like the feathers don't really show up that well. You can definitely tell that there's some noise right there. So if you zoom in, if you do a giant printout, this is not the kind of camera you want, would want to do a giant printout at. But if you just want to do like a regular printout at like this level, it's actually still pretty good. Um, it's better if you can get closer to the animal, obviously, but if you just want to post on Instagram, social media, this is easily good enough. And if you want to do like small prints, this is still easily good enough. This camera is still easily good enough for that. So, but you know, the thing with this camera, what you're really paying for is sometimes you can get the shot with a P1000 where you, whereas you can't even get a shot with a 600 millimeter lens because regardless of how, regardless of the noise, uh, this image of the loon is going to be superior to this image of the loon. So that's what you're really paying for on the P1000. We're going to look at a couple more examples. Uh, this is the, pel these are pelicans. And this is basically the same group of pelicans. And once again, one is going to be at 600 millimeters. The other one is at 3000 millimeters. So you can tell right now that um, the, the, these pelicans are the same ones that I took photos of right here. And this is at ISO 100. So these pelicans are the same pelicans that I took photos of right here. So you can see how different these are. These are at 600 and at 3000. At 600, I mean, you can... All you can do is focus on the group of pelicans, but at 3,000 millimeters, you can focus very, very directly on the pair of pelicans right there. If you look at the full screen, 600, um, you know, you have the pelicans in the middle, but they only take a small part of the screen. At 3,000 millimeters, pretty much full frame, two pelicans next to each other, grooming each other. That's what you pay, that's what you get the P1000 for. Um, and yes, in video, it does actually work this well. I did, I think... I think I did autofocus this one at and I ISO 100. If you actually zoom in, yes, you do lose some detail right here. So the closer you get to the animal, the still the closer you get to the animal, the more detail you get. If you zoom in, the farther you are, obviously you're missing the, some details on some of the feathers, but you can see like it's still fairly good detail. And if you if you're using this even for like a even for like a full page print. I don't think many people will actually notice the difference. If you want to use this for a giant wall picture, you probably need a better camera and like much more expensive equipment. But if you want to do like small prints, uh, use this on social media or something like that. This is good enough um, for that. So this is still pretty good. Im this is pretty good image quality, honestly. I will actually do a birds in flight. I will actually do a birds in flight session with a P1000 later, but all these birds are either standing or perched because I still have to get a little bit more used to the P1000 on the autofocus. And the autofocus, honestly, is not that fast at 3000. So birds in flight is going to be kind of hard, but I will do a session on birds in flight later. But you can just tell the difference between the 600 and the 3000 millimeter lens. Now let's actually look, I had to turn up the ISO for the next one because this blue Huron was kind of in a darker spot. And you can actually tell the image quality de degradation uh, from ISO 100 to 200. But anyways, here we go again. That is 600 millimeters. This is 3,000 millimeters. Obviously, I mean, it's in the shade. It's in the shadow, so it's not the best image. But you can obviously tell at 600 millimeters, it's you know a Huron. It's a decent shot of the Huron. But at 3,000 millimeters, you can see that Huron's beak. You can see that Huron's face. You can see this one's not completely focused, right? I didn't focus directly on the eye. And once again, because I focused so much in, my shutter speed should have been faster uh, to cancel out the vibrations, and I didn't have the shutter speed quite fast enough. So if you really look at it, you can tell, like, obviously, uh, the wind is blowing its feathers a little bit. Like I said, my shutter speed wasn't quite fast enough to catch this, and I didn't want to turn up the ISO any more than 200. But you can tell where 200 is inferior to 100, as the beak, you know, you're losing a lot of, you're losing some detail in the beak because of static and noise at this point. And you're also losing a bit of detail like on this part around the eye. And the eye itself is a little more blurry. 
if you really zoom in. If you don't really zoom in, um, this is still a good picture. If you really want to print with this camera, I definitely recommend that you actually, if you want to print any kind of large, larger prints, I would definitely recommend you stay at ISO 100. I would not recommend you go anywhere uh, above 100. At 200, um, the, the degradation in the image quality is definitely noticeable from 100. So if you go up 400, 800, or even more, you can definitely notice that. But either way you put it, you can, even if you have, even if you had a DSLR and a 600 millimeter lens, you can get a lot more detail on the Huron from the P1000. And uh, if the Huron is like not that close to you. Now this, this Huron was on an island, like maybe a couple hundred yards off. So even at a couple hundred yards off, you can get a very, very close up of the Huron's face. Of the blue Huron's face. So that is the power of the P1000. And we're going to look at one more, and that's the, we're going to look at a couple more. And this is the um, white egret. Now, this egret was a little bit further from me, and it was, um, it was actually in the middle of the pond and a couple hundred more yards from me than, than the Huron. And you can see the difference. This is 600 millimeters, and this is 3,000 millimeters. You can see the difference just in the size. And even though like a DSLR with a 600 millimeter lens won't have as much noise, there's just no way you can get this much detail from this image. So that that kind of reach is what you're paying for for the P1000. And obviously, I mean, yeah, you're going to have some noise, especially because there's some shadow in this picture. Um, and you can see the noise around the beak if you magnify it. But generally, still a very good, you know, still a pretty good desktop wallpaper. Um, still a pretty good, like, you know, Still a fairly good um, social media post or Facebook post. And for small prints, it really shouldn't be all that big of a deal. So that's the power of the P1000, and that's the utility right there of the P1000. Now, one more comparison image. A further birds up in a tree at, three, at 600 millimeters and at 3,000 millimeters. So if you look at it, I mean, 600 millimeters... You can tell there's a bunch of birds in the tree, but at 3,000 millimeters, you can get much closer shot of the birds. I don't know what species that is, so if you know what species that is, please let me know. That kind of looks like a night heron, but I can't really tell. I'm not, a, I'm not like a, a bird, a, a, a bird watcher by profession. I like to, sh I, I like to photograph birds, but I can't really ID birds by species all that well. So let me know if you know what that is. So this is like 600 millimeters versus 3,000 millimeters. And you can tell that there's quite a difference uh, between the two. And that's what you're paying for on the P1000. If you can't spend $17,000 buying a Sony A7R4 um, the and the $13,000, you know, 400 millimeter Sony lens and get two teleconverters, um, you have to settle for this. But at $1,000, this is not a bad deal. Overall, I actually think the P1000 is pretty really good for photos for close-ups. Um, you won't be able to do large prints, obviously. They're not going to look all that good. But for medium to small prints, they're, it seems like it's okay. And for stuff on social media, it's even it's easily good enough. Just for digital viewing, it's easily good enough. And uh, for video, it's, uh, it's absolutely killer. I mean, it's actually better for video than for photos. Just imagine, like, you're all the way across a lake, and you can get that kind of detail on your video camera when you're taking – when you're doing video – um, like a wildlife video. This camera, honestly, is much better than my D750 when I, if I want to make wildlife documentaries and videos because I can get so much more detail uh, with this camera because I can't always get next to the bird, or the Huron, or the egret. And with this, I can. it feels like I'm right next to them. And with video, I don't really notice that loss of detail. So it's an excellent video camera, and it's pretty good for... Uh, it's, pretty, it's a good spy camera, obviously, and it's also a very good camera for shooting wildlife and the moon, obviously. So overall, I'm very pleased with this camera. It will take you a while to get used to the autofocus options. So that autofocus learning curve is a bit longer than most cameras, especially with a 3000 millimeter lens. So overall, I give this camera a 92 and A minus. I'm very pleased with a P1000 camera. Hopefully, if they make like a P2000, I want them to have like kind of a one inch sensor and just get the lens back to like 2000 and 1500 or 1500 zoom. That would be great. I would love the increase in image quality, but I'm very happy with this camera. 92A minus. Excellent camera. All right, that is the that is my review. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you and have a nice day.